The iPad Pro has a lot of jobs. It's a potential laptop replacement. It's an enterprise play. It's bringing creation to the consumption-heavy world of iPad. And on top of it all, it's here to prove that the Apple's tablet line has legs in the face of slowing sales and an incredibly long replacement cycle. I'll talk about a lot of that in my review, but today I wanted to focus on one aspect, how it works as a tool to make art. This feels good. I'm holding it like I'd hold a normal pencil. And um, What do you think about the finish? Because it's got that glossy, smooth finish. It's a little slippery, but I, I mean, it maybe could be a matte finish. It's possible it could have the notches, the flat surfaces a pencil has. Maybe that would make it set in your skin better. I'm not sure, mm -hmm. but the size of it's good because sometimes you can you don't have to move your elbow. You can just keep rocking and rolling with your hands. As you can see, I can... Right. Kind of shuffle it up and down. Yeah. I like the color aspect. like. This is just a simple little thing going on here, but it's kind of fun. In just a few minutes time, otherwise I'm having to drop the pencil, get a new pencil, check the color, look at it, get it, go like this and go, oh no, I want a different color. But here, mm -hmm. let's try, just for the heck of it. I think I want to get into the blues. Out. So you you notice when you're laying it over on your side, I've, I've noticed that you're doing it kind of organically, and you can see that you're getting that kind of spread as you would by right. laying a pencil on the side. And if I do it this way, I'm getting this fine line, which mm -hmm. is, you know, how sometimes with the pencils, the first thing I'm doing is I want to hatch. Right. So I'll hatch in here with this. I like that. It's the only little thing I think is just missing a little bit is if when you, uh, it's slippery, mm -hmm. but but it's not bad. It's not like it's... Like I feel like it's a super super soft lead. I would oh, say that. Right. It's very uh, it's a very yeah. lubricated. Let's yeah, say. Yeah, because the lead uh, comes off the edge of the pencil very. Right. Easily. If very it was a soft yeah. lead, you'd be able to just glide, yeah. and you'd barely feel the friction. So the screen, the touch sensors in the screen are the same as they are in any other iPad, but they've been um, the actual touch panel itself has been upgraded with sensors that interact with electromagnets that are in the tip uh, of the of the pencil here. If we take the actual rubber tip off, you can see the little metal array here. So they're inside there. So it's all it's all about the tip there, and then a special touch beam that it interacts with, which is why it won't work on a standard iPad right now. It's like, oh, why couldn't you just use it as a regular stylus, you know, on a normal uh, iPad? And the reason for that is is that they picked a, a tip surface that doesn't work, you know, doesn't work on it. Uh, and I think they did that explicitly because they can't deliver the kind of performance they can on the iPad Pro on a regular iPad. And so if they can't make this thing work the way that they want it to, they don't want you to be able to use it at all, right, which right. is a very apple -y thing to do. Right, right. So how do you think this would change your process overall? Well, if I can uh, email this to a customer and say, here's what I was thinking. And not only that, I can jazz them up a little bit by showing them giving them a little tiny video of the actual drawing, which you showed right, me. Right, like recording the, the sketch and yeah, process. Yeah, just think about that. Video. You send this to your customer, because I paint for a living. So mm -hmm. if I was to say, hey, here's what I'm thinking, mm -hmm. and they actually saw it come to life right in their face, they would probably say, that is awesome. I want that. That's an artist's first impression, but I've been finding my own ways to use iPad Pro. Yeah, so I've been actually using the pencil to sketch a little bit too. Um, I'm, you know, it's not something I do every day, but I, I like to do it. So I've been enjoying that. Adobe has a bunch of apps out for it uh, already. Uh, sketch, ex Photoshop Express, uh, a couple of other things. But the Photoshop Fix app is one of the ones I've been using. You can paint directly on there, smooth out little facial tones. Not that my beautiful wife needs any of it, but we'll just pretend she does. I've found that um, browsing and kind of editing documents on the iPad is actually uh, much, much nicer now. Swipe it all the way to the center, you get two full apps running side by side. So for instance, if you wanted to sketch from a reference here, you can open up your references on the left and then sketch on the right, um, all without having to switch back and forth between the different apps. And then I've actually been using it as a, as a standalone television. I can open this up and put on some headphones and, and watch a show, and it's big enough to want to watch for a comfortable period of time. So here's your picture-in-picture -picture mode, so you can keep watching video while you're multitasking, doing other things. And then if you want to go back, you can pop it back out and, and watch it full screen. So the iPad keyboard allows you to type full speed you see these three pins? Oh yeah. So one's ground, uh, one's data, and one's power. Sandwiched in between is a layer of nylon 
that they laminated with metal, and so it actually makes it conductive. And then they etch away all of the other portions of that nylon material they don't need and just leave the three circuits, the power, the ground, and the data. And the, the cloth is enough, uh, just enough uh, width there to support the wattage it needs to transmit those bytes of data from the pin up here all the way down through the keyboard and back. Never has the cry of, it's just a bigger Apple thing, been more applicable than it has with iPad Pro. This is literally a bigger iPad. But that approach to thinking about it is also reductive. The Microsoft Surface, for instance, has blazed a sort of hybrid path for people that don't want to compromise on having a laptop experience. The iPad Pro, on the other hand, is unapologetically tablety. The keyboard feels great, but it's no substitute for a MacBook. The multi-app experience, on the other hand, is far and away better than on any competing system. And the A9X chip provides a performance curve that is so brutally efficient that if this isn't an addition for a fully A-series powered lineup of Macs, I will eat my hat. As you can see, there are a lot of ways to slice iPad Pro, but one of the biggest and hardest to quantify is the way that it will end the debate about whether the iPad is a tool for creation once and for all.